Hi, my name is Evelina Graver, president of the American Heart Association Long Island Board of Directors. Unfortunately, we've all seen the horrific injury to Buffalo Bills' Damar Hamlin during Monday Night Football. The American Heart Association would like to take a couple of minutes to tell you more about cardiac arrest and what it is and how to help someone when they suffer a sudden cardiac arrest. So a cardiac arrest is when the heart stops pumping exactly what it sounds like. And the main function of the heart is to pump the blood to the rest of your organs during the cardiac arrest that actually completely comes to a halt. And that's exactly what happened to Damar. So let's just go back for one second and understand why it's so important, especially when it comes to out of hospital cardiac arrests. Out of hospital cardiac arrests are those that actually take place outside of any type of health institution. And according to the data that we have from the American Heart Association, about 90% of people who suffer out of hospital cardiac arrests actually die. And if the CPR is performed immediately, it can actually uh, significantly improve those outcomes. Uh, unfortunately, bystanders only able to perform CPR only 46% of the time. That's less than half of the time for those out of hospital cardiac arrests. So CPR not only keeps the heart going, but it keeps that pumping function going. It keeps that blood flow continuously to the rest of the body, especially to the brain and, and all the other organs. What the defibrillator does, it actually notices and detects an abnormal heart rhythm, such as ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Those are the two common heart rhythms during the time of the cardiac arrest. And when a defibrillator is able to actually notice and detect those actual cardiac arrhythmias, it'll shock the patient out of it and restore the normal cardiac electric activity of the heart, which is crucial to maintaining that pumping function. Heart attack is when there is a certain blockage in one of the cardiac arteries and there's not enough blood flow to that portion of the heart muscle. A heart attack can lead to cardiac arrest, but the two are very different. Cardiac arrest is truly a complete halt of the pumping function of the heart due to the electrical activity in the heart muscle. The only way to treat a cardiac arrest is by immediately notifying 911 and starting CPR as quickly as possible. In, in the world of cardiology, we really have a very strict rule in reference to the less time down, the less chances of permanent damage. And by time down, meaning time from the time that we actually are able to recover that normal electrical activity. And in order for us to do that, we have to perform CPR. We have to provide the blood flow, the continuous blood flow to the brain and to the rest of the body. And we have to be able to restore the normal electrical heart rhythm, the normal electrical activity of the heart as quickly as possible with the defibrillator. So cardiac arrest really can be caused by almost any known heart condition. Um, as mentioned before, a heart attack can lead to potential cardiac arrest. But most cardiac arrests really occur during um, when there is a malfunction within the electrical system of the heart that leads to those abnormal heart rhythms, such as the ventricular tachycardia and such as uh, potential ventricular fibrillation. Such other completely non-cardiac related uh, causes could be actually electrolyte disbalances. So that is why it's incredibly important to actually understand that sometimes it's not just the heart disease that can cause a cardiac arrest, but other conditions, metabolic conditions, such as electrolyte imbalances, they can actually cause them as well. I think one of the most important things that anyone can do is actually understanding and knowing CPR and acting appropriately when an emergency occurs because that can truly save a life. They can easily take a moment to visit cpr.heart.org to find CPR certification that's near you, or they can learn hands-only CPR. 
the most important thing is not to go into a full shock state, which is unfortunately what happens to the majority of the bystanders when they see someone collapse near them. He, uh, bystanders really go into a, a shock mode where they don't know what to do. And those immediate um, seconds are crucial for those patients that are actually undergoing cardiac arrest. So learning CPR will save a life. Well, before knowing anything about the AAD, we need to make sure the fact that we know exactly where they are located and to make sure the fact that they are readily available anywhere that we really need them in school, in uh, different sports activities, extracurricular activities, anywhere that people actually gather, um, that's just exactly what we need to have them. So once we have them, we know we need to know where they're actually located. And once we know where they're located, we really need to know how to use them appropriately. And the beauty of AADs, it is incredibly, incredibly self-explanatory the minute that you are actually able to get it, get it in your hands with an appropriate directions of how to apply the pads to the patients, how the cardiac electrical activities being interpreted and the defibrillator will then subsequently give appropriate instructions as to whether or not a shock can be delivered or not, meaning can the heart be resuscitated and shot back into its normal electrical activity.